Asher. Ah! Jeff. We are. We have some announcements for you this week. Um, we are chilling. We are not following any of the rules that we were given. Um, do as we say, not as we do. It's fine. We're living our best lives. Okay. Um, so first up, this is gonna be your soap verse for the week. So uh, get on your Bible apps or open up the actual Bible. That's a thing that exists. And just spend some time with God and just get into his word this week. All right, next up is our Living Beyond Normal. So this week it is Emmy uh, because she took notes for church on a coffee cup. Which like when you go to a church called the Coffee Church, like I feel like that's a good way to take notes. So picture uh, right here of Emmy and her awesome, <laughs> her awesome <laughs> coffee cup notes. Um, you're amazing, Emmy, and we love that you're getting creative with embracing and learning God's word. Um, next up, we have your U version. So again, right here, big picture, or it's going to come up on a different. I don't know. Editing is a thing that exists. And um, basically, we just want you guys to get into your Bibles and be on your version app. We can still be loving Jesus while we are still in quarantine because that's the most important part. Feed yourself spiritually um, instead of physically all of the time. Because I'm snacking hecka, you know? <laughs> okay, so worship for tonight. Um, if you didn't catch it last week, that's cool. We're going to make it a little more clear to you this week. So, at the end of this video, there will be an end card, and you're gonna see a little thing that says worship. You'll click on that playlist, it'll have a couple videos for you to go to, just interact with God however you want to, whether that's praying, whether that's reading your Bible during that time, whether that's interacting with the lyrics and making art about it or writing about it, whatever it is, use that time tonight to interact with God's word. And your last little reminder is be sure to be checking out our Instagrams. Um, we keep on plugging them, but that's where we are giving you all of your information. So Monday, Chris posted a little bit of a like reach out to challenge for you guys to do. So if you guys want to be helping your community and just helping people around you, go check that out. And then there's going to be another challenge for you, just you, to grow you spiritually at the end of Chris's message. So Write that down in any way, shape, or form. Take some notes and come back with your small group and they will ask you about it. It'll be a good time. All right, that's all from us. So we're going to shoot it over to Chris with your message for this week. Hey guys, welcome to week two of the diff versus the virus. I think the diff is still winning, but I've got more ammo for you tonight. So let's just jump into our message. Question first, have you ever prayed freeze tag? I think freeze tag is my favorite kind of tag. TV tag is a close second. But freeze tag is the best mostly because I can stop running. But comment below what your favorite kind of tag is while we get started. So the reason I'm asking that question is, in case you haven't noticed, the entire world is playing freeze tag. Someone has come and tagged us and we have stopped in our tracks looking around going someone can do something someone come save us and we're kind of stuck here for a long time there's no friend coming there's no one yelling at tv show that's going to get us to be able to start again we're just going to kind of be here for a long time so my message is about that because um, for a lot of things in our life this virus is going to make it better or worse this virus is going to give us good things and bad things so we're going to talk about the good things first. So comment below what you think are any good things that could come out of this virus or this quarantine. And I'm going to talk about one good thing I think will come out of it because as scary and frustrating as a lockdown can be, uh, one good thing that can come out of it is it forces us to do something that God has asked us for a long time to do. It's actually one of the Ten Commandments and it is called the Sabbath. And it's supposed to be a verb and a noun. It's something that you do. And so we're going to talk about tonight. We're supposed to Sabbath every week. So the word Sabbath actually means to cease or stop or end. And so think about that. Does that sound familiar? Freeze tag much? Quarantine up in here? Okay, governor, we see you. Yeah, we're in a big form of sabbath which means to stop 
And so there's a lot of bad stuff that comes with that. We'll talk about that a little later. But the good thing about that is it forces us to do what God's asked us to do for hundreds of years, which is cease, stop, rest, unplug. And we're just going to figure out how we can just be, not do, but be, not post, not like, not comment, not distract ourselves, but just be. That's pretty scary, huh? Uh, yeah, that's really scary for a lot of us. I remember when my daughter was uh, her very first six weeks in college and I was trying to like have boundaries and not call her all the time and let her be her own person. And after a few weeks, it became very apparent that she was struggling and she was lonely and alone and not knowing how to deal with the isolation that a dorm life brings. And part of that was um, one night when she called crying, she just said, I just don't know how to be alone with myself. And that really hit me because I feel like a lot of us don't know how to be alone with ourselves or God. And that's the bad part of the quarantine, right? We don't know how to be alone with our own thoughts or we don't know the voice of God. And if you're under the age of 25, you've never even had to. You've never had to be alone with your own thoughts because technology has existed in a way where you've had a distraction in your hand your entire life. Whenever anything bad starts to creep up in your heart or your mind, you instantly can distract yourself. And that's why there's a fine line between Sabbath and depression. And we should probably take a look at that, right? Because one's good and one's bad. So Sabbath is just when you let your whole body and spirit and mind just kind of take a rest. It's like your whole being just takes a big, deep breath. Just in and out. You're going to stop for a minute. Sabbath is focusing on what God is saying to you. It's solitude. But if we're not careful, solitude turns into isolation. And that's your enemy's two favorite weapons. Either isolating you where you're alone and overthinking everything to the point that takes over reality, or keeping you so busy that you don't have time for God. One of my favorite quotes is, if Satan can't make you bad, he'll make you busy. And that is his two weapons. He'll either distract you with sin and ruin your life with it, or he'll distract you doing really good things but not actually spending time with God or yourself. And that's where the Sabbath comes in. But what if you're like Kylie? Where, what if you were where she was and you literally don't know how to be alone with your own thoughts? Or at least be alone with your own thoughts in any way that's healthy. So we're going to take a look at the good and the bad parts of the virus tonight. The good part is you finally have a Sabbath because we're in this epic game of freeze tag. You have nothing else to do. But the bad part is you have no clue what to do with that time. So... I want you to know I have been there. I know we're supposed to take a Sabbath. I know why it's beneficial. I know all the science and medicine and yoga and the Bible all tell me that I need to do that for my well-being. But that doesn't make it automatic. And I've had to work at it too. And I know that we're supposed to set time aside for ourselves and to be alone with God. But sometimes we just kind of wait till we have leftover time. And spoiler alert, that never happens. We have to be purposeful. And that's why Sabbath is resting. It's stopping. It's seizing something. And it takes practice. It's like a muscle. But just like a muscle, I promise you, you will get better at it the more you do it. I promise you that it will get less scary. I promise you that your, your thoughts will not unravel to that dark place that it does the more you do it and you will be able to be alone with god and yourself without over spiraling into overthinking and shame because that's really the problem right that's the bad news of this whole thing when we're left with nothing but us then we're forced to look at our own unworthiness and fear and we lay down at bed at night and if we don't have that phone in our hand where are we going with our heart and our mind. But the good news is, 
if we do look at that long enough, if we look at our own unworthiness and shame and where our thoughts go when we're laying there without our phones, uh, if we keep looking at that, we get to see what Jesus sees, which is awesome. So I'm going to share a verse with you tonight. It is your soap verse. So you can start memorizing this and figuring out how it applies to your life. But it's Psalm 4610. And it starts with God says. So you should probably pay attention. God says, be still and know that I am God. I will be praised in all the nations. I will be praised throughout the earth. And so that's kind of what this pandemic can lead to, right? It can lead to a fleet of young Christians who figure out how to be still with themselves and their thoughts and their sin. They can be still and then because of that work, God will be made known because you're gonna be better for it. This pandemic can lead to a youth church on a corner who pushes past all those uncomfortable feelings of really looking at yourself until you're really looking at God. And that's the point of this whole message. Figure out how you can really look at yourself long enough to be really looking at God. And that takes being still. It takes being still even when it's hard. So tonight I'm going to challenge you to Sabbath, to rest, to see something. The governor is kind of making us, but let's take advantage of that and figure out why God made this one of his top 10 commandments. So uh, what are some ways you Sabbath? What has worked for you? So go ahead and comment on that while I share mine. Um, I've had to really work at this in my life, like you will too, but it's so worth it. A couple of things I figured out is that I have to move when I pray. If I try to sit, I cannot stay focused on God. And so having some chair in my house or um, doing it in bed or wherever, some people just feel like they need to sit with their legs crossed and hum a little bit to be able to meet with God. But I have to be moving. So I speak to God best when I'm um, running or walking or doing chores. So I've learned that that's just okay. I should meet with God how I meet with him best, just like with my husband. He doesn't want to go on a date with me at 6 a.m. Nobody does. I have threatened to shank people at 6 a.m. But I have to feel bad for that. I'll just meet with my husband and my God when it's an awesome time to meet with them. Another thing I've done is I've, I'm a box checker, really like to check those boxes. If I make a box, it will get checked. If I've done something that's not written down, I'll write it down just so I can cross it off. So what's worked for me is to write it into my weekly to-do list. So I have a section labeled solitude. And if I don't get alone with myself, um, not with me and my kids, not with me and my dog, but literally by myself, I can't check it off, I can't move on. And so I've learned about myself that being in nature or having worship music or just being alone in my living room, talking to God, I have had such amazing times from being forced, forcing myself to have solitude. And I did have to push through that awkward time. I did have to push through those feelings and that awkwardness, but God is on the other end of that. And then the last thing I've done besides daily and weekly is I get alone for 24 hours once a year. I call it my party of one and I have my staff pray for me. And I just get alone with God. I can't talk to anyone. I don't have my phone. I can't use any electronics, including TV. I just have to be alone with my thoughts and with my God for 24 hours. And it is awesome. It is difficult and awesome. And I'm going to challenge you to do the same today. Figure it out for yourself. What's your best way of meeting with God? What's the best time of day? What's the best place? What's the best platform? How can you really rest and really Sabbath and really just be instead of doing? There's a quote I love. It'll probably come up next to me, there or there. And it'll say, the only way I can make God proud is to know him. I want you to think about that for a minute. The only way I can make God proud is to know him. That takes out all of the doing. That is Sabbath right there. You just get to lay somewhere and talk to him. You just get to close your eyes and hear from him. You just get to replace everything you are with everything that he is. That's you turning off all the distractions 
and just being his kid. We don't have to perform or pretend you're perfect. You know, just lean into who he is and who he says that we are. And so I'm going to uh, leave you with this quote. It says, Mark Driscoll says this, Hurry, worry, and busy are the unholy trinity. That's true. Hurry, worry, and busy are the unholy trinity. And I want you to think how those three things have impacted your life. Hurry, worry, and busy. How have those kept you from what you actually need and want? And I want you to think about seizing those things. Using this time to take a Sabbath from those things. And using this quarantine to finally do what God's been asking us to do from the very beginning, which is be still and know Him. And so this quote says you can either be a product of your best efforts or God's best efforts. Man, that's an easy choice. I'm going to be the product of his best efforts, which means I can stop trying to work, 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 work for him. And I can just be with him. And I can just Sabbath with him. And I can stop doing all the busyness that I do for him and figure out what he's already done. There's a reason his last words um, before he died were, it is finished. It is finished. That means we just can hang out with them. And we can just be and not work and do and distract ourselves. We can just cease and we can just rest. So that sounds really simple, but we tend to make it really hard. We hide from God through busyness and distraction. But when the world shuts down like it just did, we're left only with ourselves and our thoughts and our sin and our shame. Can you imagine if, uh, in addition to uh, the lockdown, that your phones went out and we didn't have them? What would we do? What would you do with 24 hours without your phone? You would be forced to look at who you are and who God is. And I'm challenging you to do that. Because that's the good and the bad news of this quarantine, right? Um, the good news is... Uh, if we look at ourselves long enough, that can get ugly. But if we keep looking, God's on the other end of that. So let's figure this out together tonight. And just like Kylie did, let's figure out how to be alone with God and how to be alone with ourselves so that we can get to a world who really needs us right now. The world needs a church to rise up. And we need to be able to do that. We need to Sabbath and cease and stop and fuel up so that we can go out. So I've got a couple challenges for you tonight. Um, every Thursday, you're going to get a Beyond Normal Challenge that will help you in your life. Every Monday, we have one for the world, which check it out from last Monday. You're going to take some sidewalk chalk and go write encouraging things all over your neighborhood. But Thursdays will be just for you to help your life. And so what I want you to do to challenge you this week is I want you to go for half an hour around your neighborhood. You can have music, but that's it. I want you to try to just have a half an hour where you're spending that time with your own thoughts, with your own self. You can be praying for, for your neighborhood, for people, uh, for yourself, but it's a time when you're gonna just be alone with yourself and God and see what God does with that time. You will recognize his voice better at the end of that. So we're going to transition in a second to some worship videos. Um, I'm, you're just going to click on the thing at the bottom to go through the worship videos. And we're not having uh, a video of people singing on purpose because we don't want you just to watch people singing. We want you to, to really talk to God about the words of the music and take a look at the lyrics and engage with them any way you want through journaling or art or um, talking to God about them, or writing them down, or looking verses up about those things. But just take these worship songs and uh, just engage with God for a few minutes. And then we're gonna hook up together at small group time, so it's gonna be awesome. So check out everything we have for you all week because we have something almost every day to keep you connected to each other and God during this quarantine. And just remember, God is still on the throne. And it's our job to take a break and hang out with him. All right, let's worship. <laughs> <laughs>